proceed only after you read chapter 14 and complete reading assignment 14 on Blackboard. In this chapter, we estimate the linear relationship between two variables, one of which is called the independent variable and the other is called the dependent variable. For example, one could estimate the relationship between the price of cars and horsepower, or solar radiation and Earth's temperature, or the price and quantity of Big Macs consumed. The simple linear regression model is the true relationship between dependent variable y and independent variable x, where beta 0 is a true intercept of the model, beta 1 is the true slope of the model. Beta 1 is also called a coefficient. We collect data to estimate these parameters. These parameters are analogous to the population variance and mean of, say, a variable called x. Although we'll never know the values of these parameters, beta 0, beta 1, we can estimate them using data and a regression package that is contained in, say, Excel. Epsilon, the weird-looking E, is a random variable called the error term. Again, we will never know the values of the error term, but we can estimate them with what we call residuals. The expected value of the error is equal to zero. The variance of the errors is denoted sigma square. The simple linear regression equation is a conditional mean of y. Given the value of x, we expect y to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. E of y, E parenthesis y, is the expected value of variable y for a given value of x. The error, epsilon, is in the model, but not in the above simple linear regression equation because its mean or expected value is equal to zero. The graph of the regression equation is a straight line. It shows how the average of variable y changes as the value of x changes. A positive relationship is an upward sloping line. When x equals zero we expect y to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times 0, which is equal to just beta 0, the y-intercept of the regression equation. When a x equals 10, we expect y to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times 10. The slope is the rise over the run. The run is the change in the variable x, which we denote as delta x, or the weird-looking triangle x, which equals 10 minus 0, because x was 0, now it's 10. This just equals 10. The rise is a change in the variable y, which equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times 10 minus beta 0. Here, x is equal to 10. Here, x is equal to 0. The uh, beta zeros cancel each other out, so we're left with beta 1 times 10. Dividing the rise over the run means we can cancel the tenths. So the slope, or the rise over the run, is equal to whatever beta 1 is. In most cases, you're never going to know what beta 1 is, zero, is equal to. The estimated simple linear regression equation 
Now this is the estimated simple linear regression equation. It is y hat equal to b0 plus b1 times x, where y hat is the estimate of y for a given value of variable x. We could say that y hat is the estimate of the expected value of y for a given value of x. b0 is the estimator of the true intercept of the model, which we denote as beta 0. b1 is the estimator of the true slope of the model, b1. The least squares method is used to compute estimates of the slope and intercept parameters of the regression model beta 1 and beta 0. The graph of the regression equation is a straight line. It shows how the average of variable y changes as the value of x changes. In practice, we cannot graph this line because the slope beta 1 and intercept beta 0 are unknown values. The graph of the estimated regression equation is also a straight line. It shows how the variable y changes as the value of x changes using the estimated intercept b0 and slope b1. The 31st value of x might be equal to the horsepower of the 31st car in the study, which is say, I don't know, 300 horsepower. The 31st car also has a suggested retail price of, say, $35,000. Hence, the observed 31st value of variable y is $35,000. If we knew the true values of the slope beta 1 and intercept beta 0, we could compute the average or expected value of all cars with 300 horsepower. Since there are a lot of cars with 300 horsepower, and the prices of these are not all equal, the average or expected value of the price of cars with 300 horsepower is not going to be equal to the price of the 31st car in the study. In the diagram, the price of the 31st car is greater than the expected value of cars with 300 horsepower. In practice, we will never know expected y subscript 31, which um, I have equal to 32,500, because we don't know beta 0 and beta 1. We'll never know beta 0, beta 1. The difference between the observed price of the 31st car studied and the expected value of cars with 300 horsepower is called the 31st error term, which equals $2,500 in this example. Again, because we do not know beta 0 and beta 1, and we'll never know them, this error term is not known. We don't know that it equals $2,500. Since we can compute the values of the slope B1 and the intercept B0 using sample data, we can compute the predicted value of cars with 300 horsepower. Since there are probably several cars in the sample with 300 horsepower, and the prices of these are not all equal, the predicted value of the price of cars with 300 horsepower is not going to be equal to the price of the 31st car in the study. In the diagram, the price of the 31st car is greater than the predicted value of cars with 300 horsepower. The difference between the observed price of the 31st car studied and the predicted value of cars with 300 horsepower is called the 31st residual, which we denote as E subscript 31. 
Now we can compute this. We will observe the 31st car's price in the data, and we can compute B0 and B1 using the least squares method and the sample data. The difference between an observation of Y from the population and its expected value is the error. In general, the ith value of the error is equal to the ith value of the variable y minus the expected value of the ith variable of y. The difference between an observation of y from the sample and its predicted value is the residual. In general, the ith value of the residual is equal to the ith value of the variable y minus the predicted value of the ith variable y. Sometimes residuals are also referred to as errors, but they would be, they're really estimated errors. The ith deviation from the predicted value of y is called the ith residual, which is denoted as yi minus y hat i. There are n of these residuals in the sample because we have n observations in a sample. Sometimes they are positive and sometimes they are negative. The sum of all n of these residuals is equal to zero. However, the squared residuals or squared errors are positive and so is their sum, which we can denote as a sum of the ith square deviation from the predicted value of y. We refer to this sum as the sum of squared errors. Remember, residuals are estimated errors. The following estimators of intercept beta 0 and slope beta 1 minimize the sum of squared errors, which is why we call this method least squares. Slope B1 equals the sum of the products of deviations from X and Y's means divided by the sum of square deviations from X's mean. This is the estimator of the true slope parameter beta 1. Intercept B0 equals the mean of Y minus B1 times the mean of X. This is the estimator of the true intercept parameter beta 0. Intercept B0 cannot be computed until slope B1 is computed. The value of B0 and the value of B1 can be used to compute the predicted value of Y for each value of variable X that is in the data set. Another way of computing slope beta 1 looks similar to the correlation between x and y, which is b1 is equal to the sample covariance of x and y, denoted s subscript x and y, divided by the variance of x, denoted s subscript xx, while the linear correlation between x and y is equal to the covariance of x and y, denoted as subscript xy, divided by the product of standard deviations of x and y. The third way to compute slope beta 1 is the shortcut.